Hello. Hey, how you doing, man? Good. Uh, is this a, is this a public room? Oh uh, yes. Um, if it, if, is there a problem with that? No, I just wanted to share it, so I so uh, oh. I didn't I didn't know if uh, you wanted like random people come in here or what. No, I just want I just I would like to converse converse with you. Um, how how yeah. was that thing? Um, I completely forgot what you were writing that paper on, but I remember it was like blowing my mind at one point. Can you remind me what it was? Um, let me see. I can actually, can I just pin it in the, uh, I'll pin it in the, uh, thing yeah. here. So, so honestly, let me tell you this, right? I think the only question worth pondering is, is what is the truth? I think that's the only question that's worth well, pondering. Well, you saw, you saw it was glitching people out. So. Why is that? Can, can you, cause I, I have a hard time understanding why. Um, because it was all it was kind of um to the point where we were in the uh talking in the back channels about the irreconcilable nature of um the overlays that have been placed on humanity um it's just uh systems systems of control uh being adopted by people as you know systems of truth and reality um it it only leads to uh, you know, uh, malfunction or like a uh, breakdown or, you know, glitching when you have somebody uh, break it down to, to that foundation because they, re <laughs> they realize there is no, there is no foundation. Um, but it, is, it is, inter it is interesting watching people glitch out. Like that, that was Kevin dude, that Kevin dude totally glitched out. <laughs> So I I was a bit confused. Do you th what was he glitching out to? Was it the information or was it the delivery? You think? Like, look, um, humans, uh, you, uh, computers computers were created, you know, based on on us. Like they are they are a copy of the you know uh, limitless uh, calculation and you know computing ability of the human the human mind. Um, but what I think has happened, um, what I think has happened, uh, you know, society, as societies developed modern, blah, 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 and like these, you know, governments, literally government means to, you know, control the mind. So wh what, what I think has happened is um, the limitless nature of, you know, truth and the human mind and uh, capabilities have been overlaid with uh, limiting programs. Like if you, like, for example, if you- Are, are uh, you implying that we're regressing as opposed to progressing? Yeah. Uh, that's a huge, uh, that's a huge uh, jump to make because that's counter, that's counterintuitive. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's. It's. It's what. Um. It, like, the the organic progression is supposed to be. You know, limitless, ever expanding. Um. You know, ever learning. Um. But when you kind of put it up against uh, the systems of control operating the the world as we know it at the moment, um. Everything is kind of phase locked. You, uh, like you saw. You saw perfect example when you ask somebody to break down uh you know and look inside themselves to uh like what is truth um the they can't even they won't question themselves to the point of you know dismantling uh religion or whatever fundamental uh thing has you know attached itself to their sense of self and like being like the it's 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 designed that way to um to make people uh you know controllable and implode when uh you know when um when necessary like the it, it's like um uh you know the concept of stack overflow educate me um so stack overflow is a, a computer um a computer programming term where uh, 
when um, when a certain amount of code is uh, is input and it uh, uh, the the processing power of the the um, whatever the computer can't handle it uh, after that after whatever that um, point is uh, it just comes out as like jumbled um, as jumbled code even though it was fed in as uh, you know organized um, information uh, uh, once so there, once there's that, a threshold there's some there's some threshold um, there is a, there is an artificial threshold that's been placed on humanity um, by design by 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 society by education um, by religion by all these systems of control there there is like this point of uh, a point of um, stack overflow that happens for people whether even even people genius people in medicine uh, uh, now with the if uh, with the after the whole uh, COVID, uh, you know, uh, pandemic, um, somebody who's like a PhD has like three PhDs in medicine. Um, when they're faced with the reality of what, you know, th they probably were involved in perpetuating and you, uh, you show them <laughs> what the truth is now, uh, you know, back then the truth was different, but when you show them the, what the truth is now, even somebody intelligent reaches this point of stack overflow because it's bit, um, the systems that they uh, install. Okay, can can I pause you really quickly, Austin? Because you mentioned yeah, the word right. intelligence, right? You said even somebody with high intelligence. Now the question is, how do you? What's the what's the premise of of, of, of measuring this this intelligence? Uh, is it is it the information that was digested by the individual, or was it or was it the ability for them to process information, process complex information, complexity. So what intelligence are you referring to? And if that's the case. Um, so yeah, there's clearly, there's clearly an intelligence of processing. So you say the doctor, the doctor, the doctor could, could be described as someone that possessed that? No, not the reconciling intelligence, but they had the, they had the, uh, you know, the, the consensus uh, reality of what intelligence is. Okay. You know, they read all the books. So the information. Um, so they, they possess uh, a lot of information, right? So they, so we yeah, can say the information age, information. right? So the information yeah. age uh, eventually transitions to a new age, right? Now that age, information is does not suffice. Information is not enough because you cannot have enough information to be able to make predictions in this in this new um dimension essentially yeah yeah and um we have to get to this point of um uh, so we redefine you know, intelligence creating... right we must redefine intelligence essentially we must redefine what it means to be intelligent yeah if if people if people haven't seen that uh, a, a huge overhaul of education religion um government and all that stuff is is in direly needed um all, all the progress and exponential stuff you're you know uh, uh projecting is not going to happen because uh like i said by design um everything is uh everything is made uh you know to to be uh finite um uh, we we aren't we aren't raising our kids and the education system and government and medicine in this uh in this limitless realm you know uh th they they deal in absolutes that are uh false um the like uh so, so essentially you're saying that the systems that we're accustomed to are systems that eventually collapse at some point due to some sort of pressure whether it's internal or external right so um, these yeah it, but, it, it's it, it depends on the person uh, it depends but yeah it could be external pressure that creates that stack overflow or you know it's internal uh, processing like you know the person can't reconcile the information uh doesn't want to you know s start over from zero um and like forget everything they've learned or come to the realization or accept the truth that everything they've learned possibly is a lie and yeah it's just uh, those things are going to be very necessary. How about going this? Forward. 
you know, I'm, I'm usually nicer by saying that the information wasn't a lie, but it just wouldn't suffice. And, you know, it just, it's not enough to make a conclusion. When you make a prediction, you, you, you get inconsistencies. So the information is just not enough. So there has to be some other way to process information, to process uh, um, um, the totality of everything, right? To be able to get to a conclusion because information itself is just not enough. Yeah, exactly. And the, we, we're, we're, we've been raised to, you know, trust the information, trust the science, trust the government, trust the school, trust this, trust that, but it's all, um, you know, like all those things are finite. All of those things are flawed. All of those things, uh, are sub subjective like no matter how exactly <laughs> so the truth no does matter. not lie in information yeah no it doesn't and that's that's the that's this that's 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 the realization that a lot of people have to come to but i think there's uh, some sort of tug of war um with that um reasoning yeah um and it's there it's like i said it's by design um uh you know their systems of control are um are what the you know the people in power and the people in power want if if uh you know if everything was if everything was allowed um and everyone was allowed to question everything um you know governments would have destabilized and like uh, uh wouldn't be wouldn't have been necessary at the like if if there was an organic progression without you know the the invisible hands uh you know uh making policies and making things laws and blah blah, blah all this bullshit is happening you know to to limit humanity but if if there was a uh, at any you, point you know you, there, you know how i see it, austin i see well, it as just power dynamics it's just there's going to be a change in the power structure um and yeah you know with the current system you know the power you know was in certain um positions and with the new shift the power is going to transition to a new position so i just look at it like, like power dynamics so it's in a way it's inevitable that's what I'm trying to say. It's definitely inevitable, but um, it's not going to outpicture. It's not going to outpicture as you know, some people might want. Like you know, somebody who's a devout Christian is hoping that you know that turnover is going to happen. You know, Jesus is coming, blah blah blah, or, or you know, the rapture, and then uh, a scientist or a scientist or whatever, scientism is going to you know think of. Uh, think of that's going to come in a, a different way. And uh, like, I'm trying to paint a picture for you to show you that uh, at every angle, like this thing has been, has been planned and seeded so that humanity, uh, like the consensus reality will always fail, even though there's going to be exceptions and outliers and people who, uh, who know what's going on and who uh, wake up to it. Uh, like, that we have to figure out a way to uh, infect um, infect the like ninety, I don't know, three percent. So, of so, the world. so, I'm, and you know what, you know what, Austin, I agree with you. I think we're in dire need of a consensus, a consensus that unifies all the different discrete systems. Um, and if we don't get to that consensus, I think there will be a lot more disorientation in the future. Yeah, like you can, you can it's not even a conspiracy to know that consensus reality has been uh, manufactured and shaped and controlled by, uh, you know, whether you want to call it fine, like the bank, big banks, big pharma, big uh, science, government, like they, they have, they have for generations and probably even before that for thousands and thousands of years, consensus reality has been uh, farmed uh, manufactured, uh, and, uh, you know, manipulated, uh, to, to do what we want. And we're at this, like, uh, 10,000 years ago, humans didn't need to pay taxes to live on the planet. 
they didn't need to, you know, pay land shit to, you know, build some, to build a hut on the fucking land. Um, but, uh, this is like, a an infection that started like thousands of years ago and it's worked like it's, it's like, uh, we're, we're at the point of like, you know, when somebody, when a body's dealing with a cancer that has metastasized and spread through every organ in the body and is like a uh, borderline, uh, gonna shut the system down. Like that's, that's where we are right now. If humanity doesn't, um, just like throw everything to the wind and just like, uh, like the consensus has to be that everything has been a lie. And like, we, we start, we start from zero again, like, uh, but no one's going to do that. Like fe fear is too, is too strong. Wait, but if it's inevitable, if it's inevitable, you're saying that there has to be a zero point, right? We have to restart. So, but to restart, it means that something has to end, correct? Yeah, I'm. I in my head, I'm hoping for an ideal thing where it's not gonna get messy, it's not gonna get ugly, and billions of people aren't gonna have to die. But um, most likely, for this reset to happen, um, uh, billions of people are gonna have to die. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's the thing. I have a bad feeling. I'm not sure, uh, but I think there's definitely going to be. Um, because you're right it's inev right. it's inevitable like na nature nature is uh inevitable like organic creation like these organic processes of the human mind can only be suppressed for so long like for example like i was saying that you know humanity has been suppressed and like you know we've been uh the consensus the consensus reality has been farmed and and managed for uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years but that's against nature right so uh eventually you know you build a you build a dam if it rains hard enough uh that dam is gonna that dam is gonna burst and uh uh yeah that's what i'm getting that's what i'm getting at we're past the point of uh you know reconciling and uh you know reaching consensus on you know everybody you know just being like oh yeah we're we're we were really dumb and the governments and like all these the one percent and like whatever they had us you know for a loop let's just you know start over and be like you know it's all cool like we're past that point maybe maybe like 300 years ago that was possible but not uh, after this point the irrec we're at the irreconcilable uh you know point now like uh, i'm not saying there won't be exceptions there will be groups of people you know who reconcile against all odds and you know create their communities and stuff and that's where i'm gonna be when um the the dam bursts on the 90 like three percent of the planet <laughs> like they're when their consciousness gets to that stack overflow point and they can't compute anymore because there's so much competing information. Uh, like you, you can only suppress and avoid and, um, you know, uh, 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 put your head in the sand for so long with all of this, like new information coming, uh, coming in. Um, like you're going to have to re overwrite, like you're going to have to, uh, overwrite or um uh, you know that save file is going to be corrupted or I, I, I like to, i like to call it a, a re there has to be a recalibration on on yeah. a more optimistic uh uh you know no it's like yes i think the system naturally over time becomes less efficient so yeah how do we fix that we re we recalibrate we and we and people have to be willing to recalibrate too <laughs> Mm, exactly. And then that will help us reorient ourselves. Now the question yeah, becomes, but, okay, go ahead. No, I was going to say, but in, like you have, you have people who are, uh, devoutly religious, believe in their things. And, um, you know, they're, they're taught that, um, these things are beyond, you know, beyond understanding and everything can be reconciled through God or through Krishna or through, uh, um, through uh what was the other one uh muhammad 
or who's the who's the god yes, no i actually Allah. i love that you're Allah. bringing this point up exactly continue i'm not gonna interrupt like, you but i love this point yeah so that's that's gonna be people's defaults when when it when it comes time to do that uh they they're or they're gonna have to break through so many so many layers there's the religion the religion layer is going to be the hardest one because um there's so much programming that comes with that there's so much programming that comes with education too of course and there's uh so much programming that comes from government the government layer too but the hardest one i think to break is going to be um uh going to be religion because like people who are devoutly religious already think that you know their God has all the answers, whatever we come to them with, uh, they, they can, um, without, a, without any doubt can just, uh, be like, you know, this is the devil or this is the, you know, the polar opposite of what I don't want to be or blah, 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 blah. And like, it, it'll create, uh, that, that glitch that, you know, you saw Kevin doing when, when it comes down to, um, you know, questioning that, that truth. Uh, and the information, uh, it's gonna, it's they, it's built in. These these religions are built in with uh, fail safes that uh, will, you know, completely lock people in um, when the time comes. Like when it when it, that point of freedom comes uh, and that truth and like this this uh, expansion comes. What they're gonna see coming is the end of their um in reality the end of their world um and uh i'm telling you bro this thing has been intelligently designed for for millennia it's that's a very good point there yeah it's um i i look at it like it's like it's an algorithm and there has to be a hack for the algorithm and i think there is and i think the truth is potent enough dense enough to be able to hack the algorithm you know uh, all these algorithms, but let's say let's let's classify them. Uh, let's say that there are two types: there, the ones that are finitary and the ones that are infin are infinite. The finitary algorithms are the ones that we use, right, to 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 sort of govern our physical reality, right. So how do we break that? How do we hack that? We have an algorithm that is infinite. You have to you have to be willing to uh, go beyond the you know the the limit like you have to go beyond the physical if, you have if, to go beyond the physical that's why the algorithm be, is, is beyond yeah, it's beyond yeah. computation and it's beyond physical it has to be something that is omnipresent and imaginary but also representable can you represent the truth that's why i asked you earlier what does the truth look like if i asked you how how would you represent it would you say it is it in a textbook or can you draw it on the on the on, a, on, a, on the beach on the in the sand you're you're coming you're coming to that point where uh, i'm just going to answer with uh the the people who know the truth that matters like the truth that we're talking about it has to, it's like ex, it's an experiential thing and uh, somebody would have had to take their you know to their mind there and um you know recollected that for it to even be be possible like the only reason we've gotten this far in this conversation uh without either of us glitching out is because uh in in our own ways we have uh experienced this infinite you 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 know maybe it's from your studies or in your you know whatever um however far you know you've gone in there and like the pondering and stuff and me you know in my own way but we've ex uh this limitless like this infinite this uh eternal like ever expansive thing we've we've touched it in our own ways and um that's really the that's really the truth and like a even though we can't explain what it is and uh you know as as hard as we try to show people we just end up sounding crazy but what the when the when two people who have seen it are talking no matter their background no matter uh their education no matter you know how they happened upon it um 
they can like dance they can dance around it and still and still talk and like uh you know create ideas and uh you know the sparks are there uh that's what i'm saying that's the eternal uh that's the eternal i think truth but um a lot of people a lot of people are designed and like we've we've been born to operate on finite truths and once that limit is reached um you know you either you either say no that's sin no that's uh you know uh that's we shouldn't go there because you know god didn't go there or whatever like whatever reason reasoning and uh logic people uh distorted logic people use uh to avoid the expansion um that's on them but like anyone who has uh broken past that point we will be able to have conversations with and like they they'll know that you know that's that's the truth like i that was a really long-winded uh answer but um hopefully you caught what i was throwing i like i like how you said you've touched the truth and you know I, i've had the same experience it's i feel as though i've touched it i've 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 seen it. So the only thing I could do is represent it. And so that's why the question is, how, what does it look like? If we were to represent you can't the represent truth, it. right? You can't represent it now. Listen, it looks listen. different to, it looks different to each of us. You came upon this, mm. uh, this infinite in your own way. I came upon it in my own way, but, uh, however, this, the information processed and entered us, uh, that's how that's how it like if you tried to explain it to me how you found it i'm not gonna get it but we can talk we can talk and dance around it uh uh and if i try to explain it to explain it to you in the way that i found it you're just gonna you know uh your perceptual filters will just you know you know uh maybe you know judge it or be like oh i wouldn't have done that so it gets to the like we we've uh, we got to a place where you know our uh ego perceptual filters and um you know all these uh like phase locked and uh finite things um aren't uh aren't able to process but like we we grasped something like we we got a spark we got that sp a spark of something however we found it we found it um but uh, like you the, the i think the the better question would be how we would uh how we we would create this catalyst catalyzation in in other people so they can find it in uh you know in in themselves like that like i'm telling you kevin was probably very close to catalyzing what we were going to catalyze but you know he it's he's too programmed with the you know the christianity stuff the bible is the truth and all this bullshit so like that's that's his reality and you know that's uh that's it but um you know I mean, what yeah, i, think? I think you know what i think austin what i think i think the truth is something that we can represent if we figure out the thing that is digestible by everyone the consensus that you mentioned earlier, what, how do we represent this truth? Since you've touched it earlier, like you said, how do you represent it you, though, in a way I that is digestible? The, so, so let me finish. Religions, let me, religions let me finish. by design. So in a way that is, that, but, but, but here's how we transcend that. Because the, the point I'm trying to get to is the limit, the limitation of language itself. I'm trying to get to the point that language itself does not, it's not robust enough to represent this truth because it discretizes it. So, it loses its is it, it it loses its um its 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 completeness, right? So the question that I have is how because do you, it's is, an experience. Like you can't you can't uh, bring an experience into words like that kind of experience. You can't write it down or uh, maybe you could draw it as a picture. Now we're talking, so we're exactly where I expected us to be. It's <laughs> I think truth is a symbolic abstraction. I think the, the the most digestible way to represent truth is with a symbol. Yeah. Um, and I think 
the symbols transcend language. Going back to the initial point about the limitation of language and how language is not robust enough to represent the completeness or the infinity that we're trying to refer to. The infinite intelligence, the infinite knowledge, the infinite, et cetera, et cetera. So how do we transcend language? How do we represent this truth in a way that anyone, regardless of where they are geographically, can actually understand what it is and digest it, right? If you, That's the question. Um, if, you've, if you've ever seen, I don't know if you've ever been to India or, um, uh, or Malaysia and seen their temples, um, if, you, if you've seen like the temple carvings or the, the carvings they put in the ceilings and how intricate and like insanely like DMT trippy they look, um, like looking at that, I think uh, like it naturally evokes that response in people that like, what the fuck is this? Like, this is, this is beyond words. This is beyond anything. Um, but I think that, yeah, uh, like, you know, our ancestors and ancient, ancient, you know, cultures had, were, were on the right path. And I think we, we drifted too much into written word and language. Um, but a lot of ancient cultures, you know, used runes, symbols, pictures, um, designs, uh, you know, uh, geomet geometry, um, shapes and like all these things to to represent like you know concepts so i think uh yeah uh, uh just as i i was saying earlier that you know religions by design were meant to be irreconcilable because no matter what even if you tell even if you tell a a an islam a, a buddhist a, a a jew um, a Christian or and whatever else, even if you tell them, you know, if you show them proof that uh, all of their religions started from one thing. Um, so stop fighting and like throw burn all the books and just start it over. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna start the biggest holy war on the planet. They're gonna be like, one of these religions brought this up, uh, you know, because they want to take control. Like it's it's designed to fail. Like religion was a, a system of control and manipulation um, that, that was designed to fail. Maybe ancient, ancient, ancient times before, you know, uh, all these concepts uh, uh, of, um, you know, the ego uh, infected the human mind. Maybe back then, you know, religion started as, you know, paintings on the wall uh, people were having transcendental experiences and they'd like drew some weird shit and they were like, Oh, that, that's what I saw. What could that have been? And then, you know, um, uh, maybe colonialism came along and they, you know, they had a little bit more knowledge. Um, and they saw those paintings and they were like, wait, we could tell these people that's their God or whatever. Um, and he, you know, he sent us to, you know, save them. And like, you know, we can control, like, what if that's what's been happening throughout history this whole time? Like, uh, people who, uh, were maybe advanced in a certain way, like, uh, we clearly know that there's a, a way to advance with in humanity where you're in harmony with nature and in, and in harmony with the universe, but there's also a way to advance where you're, uh, you know, subjugating everything. And um, I think the parts of humanity that uh, advanced by subjugating everything kind of just uh, controlled, uh, you know, control the narrative now. And uh, like we like we're just going to have to unless unless, you know, some crazy thing happens and everyone just wakes up and realizes, you know, everything has been a lie. Uh, I don't see it. I don't see it. Um, I don't see it uh, having a like happening that 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 overturn or the the uh, reorganization happening in a in a way that's a win win for everybody. There's definitely like it, there it could have been a win win at one point in history, I think, but right now it's going to be like there's definitely going to be a loser. Um, 
but I think organically the what's been subjugating the planet and not being in harmony with it um, and uh, and stuff that that's going to be what's going to be, um, you know, uh, wiped, so to speak. And um, what scares, I think, a lot of people is that they don't know if they're on the side of, uh, you know, harmony with nature or uh subjugating it because complicitly you know if you if you're religious or if you've engaged in a lot of these you know government systems you're you're complicit in uh you know the the disharmony of uh you know bringing the disharmony into the planet so it's um i think you're definitely onto something that it has to be uh, it has to be you know in pictures and because and that's how ancient cultures did it. So if you can somehow create uh, a visual representation uh, that simultaneously, uh, you know, by just looking at it, it create it unlocks people's that part of people's brains. Um, then I think you might you might be onto something, and we can broadcast it. Like, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> now, now, now I can talk about now. And that's why Kevin flipped. That's why Kevin had a short circuit. But you know what I think, Austin? I think um, I think a symbolic abstraction is the most efficient way of representing an idea. I agree. I agree. Uh, if I'm understanding symbolic abstraction right, yes, I think I am. I I have a pretty good intuitive grasp of a lot of stuff, so I think I'm understanding uh, what you mean by symbolic abstraction. So 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 my intuition says that if we were to represent the truth in the most in the simplest way, in a way that is digestible by everyone and it transcends language itself you know you can go to a man in asia a man in brazil a man in the us a man in africa a man in south africa a man in australia and the truth looks the same and means the same thing yeah wait wait um that that paper is not the one that i saw you uh you had last time the other one had like a bunch of shapes in it like it had like a triangle and like some some other weird stuff in it. Oh yes, so I think on that one we, we were talking about because I was I think we were talking about the, the currency. So I, I'll post it. So that was I think that was called the intelligence standard or the language of intelligence. Let me see if I I, I write papers and I forget about them. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that one was that one was interesting. I remember you were tell you, uh, but you you drew something on there, right? It was like a triangle with a dot in it or something. Or like, the, I don't know if it had the infinity symbol in there, but do you know which one I'm referring to? I'm going to, I'm going to pay, I'm going to put it in the, in the thing, on the thing upstairs in a second. Um, um, but yeah, like, um, so I, in my delving, you know, in the, in the spiritual side of stuff, I've come across a lot of teachings, um, and there, there are a few that have reconciled, you know, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the irreconcilable stuff in religion and medicine and the government and reality and history. There, there are a few, there are a few books out there who have tried to reconcile it. And, um, w the, the conclusion that they reached is that, um, this, uh, uh th this like confusion was created on purpose um to keep to keep humanity from uh, s uh basically uh advancing in its in its natural in its natural state like uh like i was saying earlier if if humanity was advancing in its natural state um you know government is not necessary uh medicine is not necessary um uh, education is not necessarily because necessary because all these things would be taken care of um, organically. Like you know, you 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 grow up, you're taught by whatever elders there or whatever. Like 
whatever system is there um or you know even um uh if if you believe that the uh dna you know holds information um there there's a couple philosophies that i read that um that said that um th uh, the human genome was uh was tampered with somewhere somewhere in history by extraterrestrials and um that 90 like 97 percent of our dna's like junk uh uh, is a it's actually a lie and it's like just dormant so for some reason uh like 97 percent of our genetic code is dormant um and i i just feel like if 100 percent of it was was active you wouldn't need government you wouldn't need education because i feel like as soon as you're born on the planet you would know what the fuck is, go is going on like there there's definitely like fuckery on a level that would blow your mind uh that is going on right now i can send you um i can send you the book that i read uh if if you're up for reading like three you know pages. you know you know you know what's, you know what's funny i actually agree with you because one of my one of my um one of my statements is that babies are more intelligent than adults and that's if you're going by the act by the new definition of intelligence. But if you're going by the by the current definition, then then you you can make the argument that babies are less intelligent. But if you're going by the new definition of intelligence, babies are more intelligent, and over time they're tr they're actually trained to uh, become less intelligent. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's an interesting concept, yeah, cool. which goes back to the to the whole concept of regression. Like we're regressing as opposed to progressing as a civilization. If you were to extrapolate yeah. from the baby all the way up, right, to the our civilization. Uh, I don't think I've ever agreed with you more. So, but yeah, like there's definitely been some kind of tampering, for whatever reason done to humanity to keep uh to keep us from advancing on this natural uh infinitely eternally expansive uh you know consciousness like uh you know this path of like consciousness um like things have been implanted throughout history and in in uh you know social structures and religion like all of these things only somebody who would devote their entire life to a religion would think that it's going to free them um, and not see that it's actually like their uh, doom. It really mind blows me. Um, but that's that's the level of confusion and like how lost, uh, human you know, humanity has become where we've externalized everything um, to the point where, um, you know, even, even the systems to govern, like we're supposed to govern our mind, but humanity has gotten to the point where the, the government has, has manifested externally. Everything is starting to manifest externally. And what we want, what we want is stuff to ma manifest internally, um, if I'm if I'm making any sense, but it's it just it it just blows my mind that um, you know more people don't more people don't see it that way, and it, um, I don't know maybe a maybe a, a symbolic abstraction will fix fix uh, the dormant DNA in people, and uh, and maybe they'll start questioning <laughs> questioning their reality. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it's it's funny. You actually everything you said did the last like twenty seconds. Exactly. It's it's they see it and it does its thing. Yeah, but I don't know what the fuck that thing is. If you if there's some way to encode every religion into a symbolic abstraction and then so you uh, don't have to you don't have to so all you have to do is create a consensus that unifies all the discrete representations of spirituality but it has to have something that triggers that response and people like what uh, what
was the that core truth from all the religions has to be present in that symbolic abstraction exactly. or that that core feeling or whatever 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 that thing is that you know sparked a person the thing the thing that unifies or, all religions is not spiritual What is the it's the it's fear? I don't know. Are you gonna make a scary symbolic abstraction? Um, essentially, what I'm saying is, we can represent in totality the ideas okay. that these religions, these spiritual systems represent. We can represent that in a symbolic abstraction. Is this so we can, is this like is this like a four D is it so like the, so so essentially shape? we're gonna we're gonna do a consensus mechanism a, a consensus algorithm that transcends spirituality and religion itself. Well, I don't think it could tra transcend spirituality because it is it would it would be itself a form of spirituality because it's tapping. Into okay, see so now and that's an interesting point, yeah. but I don't I don't know if I agree. I think so 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 I think the whole premise of religion the whole premise of spirituality can be collapsed into a symbolic abstraction and new age, new age spirituality yes like there there there's definitely uh, spirituality that's basically become a religion as well but I don't subscribe to like for example your whatever abstraction you'd create to uh, you know uh, to show people whatever you're gonna show them if you showed it to me I probably wouldn't it wouldn't probably arise the same response in me because I that like that I don't I'm not carrying that program or maybe I am and I might be surprised but like the like I definitely know what you're saying that there is uh you know there is a, a mainstream spirituality and there's mainstream religion and I think those things need uh those things need up definitely um could be could be uh reconciled into one abstraction because they're basically uh they're basically polar opposites of each other I think spirituality that mainstream spirituality was born out of the um uh, uh, out of the inability for people to reconcile the, um, you know, the, the really, uh, uh, you know, dogmatic stuff in, in religion. So, you know, spirituality had to come out, um, and, uh, offer, you know, a thing that, uh, that, you know, reconciled that, um, that aspect uh, but I subscribe to a thing I think that is kind of even beyond spirituality. It's like, like I, like I told you, like we've touched, we've both touched this thing and the way I touched it, it's kind of just given me like this view of like this quantum thing that I was talking about earlier, where none of it, none of it really matters. I just have to make sure, uh, before I die, I reconcile as much as I can. So when when I'm like squeezed out of the matrix, I take as much of me <laughs> out as as possible. Like that's that's uh, that's kind of what I'm uh, like uh, you know working working towards working towards now. But I totally believe, yeah, like mainstream sp spirituality and mainstream religion um, are kind of two sides of the same coin. It religion like the dogmatic religion i think it it you know, unintentionally or whatever birthed spirituality because for for somebody you know telling you you're gonna go to hell you're if the if you do this uh, you know you to go to heaven you have to pray you're whatever this like naturally somebody who doesn't agree with that is gonna sit maybe meditate maybe do some plant medicine and they're gonna realize like wait there's some shit here that religion doesn't talk about and i think this is spirituality so i think yeah like there's definitely there's levels to this but um i think the abstraction that you're talking about um would be very beneficial i think for like 95 percent of the planet 
abstraction is the key to generalization. Yeah, in my head, when you t when you say this symbolic abstraction, all I'm seeing is like uh, an um, an amorphous, like nebulous uh, cloud of I don't know, um, I don't know, possibility or like shapes or something, and uh, it arranges itself. I don't know in 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 ways that you know respond to a person's uh, you know mental distortion in uh in the exact way like you know how uh there's neuro neurotransmitters and stuff in the brain like i feel like this uh, symbolic abstraction uh if it if it functions in the way i think it's going to function it should function in a way that it uh it's like a neurotransmitter and it it uh locks into that missing piece of that person's like you know consciousness or or brain or whatever in a way that it kind of breaks the chains of, uh, you know, whatever, uh, like dogma or whatever, uh, limiting phase locked belief that, that they're in, if that made sense. It did. It did. Um, abstraction, a symbolic abstraction is digestible by everyone, a child and an old person. So it just makes sense that, the simplest representation of truth will be a symbol. Have you, you have prototypes of this symbol? Mm -hmm. And like, you know, you're going to have to make it like 3D or 4D or 5D or like, it's going to have to be like tetrahedronic by, by nature or, or some, something that, that, uh, that the human mind can uh, map to like multiple dimensions of itself because otherwise like a 2d thing even a 3 I don't think a 3d thing is uh, is gonna be maybe a 3d thing might be enough honestly like people are basic so I think yeah start with 3d don't make sure the symbolic abstraction is not 2d I think a two-dimensional representation might actually be the most efficient way to do it think about it think about if you were to represent, so the goal is to represent generality. How do you represent, like generality as in, what is, how do you represent everything? Everything in the universe, from the physical to the non-physical, from the microscopic to the macroscopic. How do we unify them? How do we unify the biggest things in the I universe? I mean, that depends on the person's perspective. It, it, it does, you, but you, you could, could, could represent it symbolically, the symbol, for, should be objective. If you were to represent it symbolically, there will be a one symbol that represents the biggest things and the smallest things in the universe. So I think that's the, that's the question that we ask ourselves: is what is how what's that symbolic representation? How what does it look like? For me personally, since I'm that cool, you could put a dot on a piece of paper and tell me whatever you want, and I would believe. I would be like, yeah, that's everything. <laughs> everything in the dot. <laughs> like everything's on the dot like for me a dot is enough but you know people they're gonna want some something that sparks their fancy something that's like ooh like yeah it's gonna have to get really abstract for them i would be content with a single dot but um so how do we I, so exactly so so and, and you know that that's a great argument actually so the question is this, right? How do you, if you were to represent generalization, like to, like like generalization as in like the general symbol for everything, what what does that look like? What did your what did your intuition say? The general symbol for everything. General general because imagine generalization as the key to intelligence. Are you are you asking me are you asking me uh, as if I'm a baby that doesn't know anything or like from my personal experience at this point in time as a baby that knows nothing that's the perspective that I that, that I come from as a baby that you, that that was just born what is the representation of generality if 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 we say that abstraction is the key to generalization right remember we're we're, we're stuck on abstraction that yeah. the truth the truth must be a symbolic abstraction 
And then the next step is, okay, symbolic abstraction, cool. Okay, so the symbolic abstraction must represent everything, right? General, you know, so that the, so we optimize for generality. So what is the symbol that represents generalization? It represents everything in the universe, from the biggest things to the smallest things, right? So abstraction is the key to generalization, which means that generalization is the key to intelligence or in, in, to, to truth, right? Yeah. I think that's a question we ask ourselves, right? Is what does that look like? Symbolically, if that's the, if that's the most digestible rep uh, 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 representation. But wait, isn't an abstraction by its very nature uh, representationless? <laughs> like, like isn't isn't that what how how abstract works? Like the representation. Uh, doesn't or is doesn't matter or is subjective or is um is beyond uh is beyond representation i don't know i mean we have we represent ideas all the time think of emojis right the representation that's and an, and a symbolic abstraction if you consider those symbols that that could be a symbolic abstraction so the question is what is us how do we represent generality the question becomes how do we represent generality as a symbolic abstraction, as a symbol? Because generality is how we how we access this so-called intelligence, this so-called truth, right? Because it's the thing that unifies the biggest things and the smallest things. Right? Yeah. Uh I couldn't I couldn't tell you honestly. Like I said, personally, I'd be okay with a dot on a piece of paper. Um I think a a baby would be cool with maybe a bigger dot on a piece of paper um if I, if i was a baby like uh, <laughs> if i was a baby i think if you put a piece of paper in front of me and it had a dot on it i'd probably be trying to like grab the dot um and stuff but, but you know what i love like, i love just, you just said I, that you just grab the dot now let's say that the baby the, the baby babies like to touch and feel stuff so that dot will be represented as something like a circle, like a ball, right? You, you give the baby a ball. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the, the, the abstraction, I think uh, it, w it would depend, like, I think there isn't, like, it would be, it would be too, I think too difficult to come up with one single abstraction that reconciles everything but maybe you can create you know a few different ones for uh you know the uh for the most uh the most like you know irreconcilable ideas in reality and then once people have kind of uh you know settled on that then you could probably um hit them with another one <laughs> because i'm like like the, like there this could only go two ways if you figure out an abstraction that is that is uh you know accurate enough to um to reconcile everything immediately for everybody it's i it's gonna do one of two things it's gonna drive people insane or they're gonna get it Ooh, so, exactly <laughs> so we're kind of delving we're kind of delving into like areas of like the like if you think of it on a quantum if you think of it on a quantum level um like uh this this stuff um you know maybe like you know what i'll give the, i'll tell you what i'll give Wait, the baby I'll, I'll give the baby a ball i'll give the baby a triangle and i'll be, i'll give the baby an infinity symbol and then what like you you watch which one it plays with most <laughs> I'll give the baby those symbols because 
those symbols represent with those three symbols we can recreate everything so those are the tools that the baby needs to be able to master itself but how would it understand infinite if you give it uh if you give it uh the infinity symbol all it's gonna see is like a, a closed loop like a ribbon i mean like a, that's, a that's 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 you that's you that's that's your perspective i'll have to ask the baby i'll okay. have to ask the baby <laughs> <laughs> Because when I, when you show when I see the infinity symbol now, after doing everything that I've done, I see a closed loop, um, and it's actually uh, it's the energy's not going anywhere. So, um, hmm, interesting. Th that's that's the, uh, from from everything that I you know I've. But remember, uh, I've the baby read, has I've remember the baby the has the infinity. The baby has the circle, and the baby has a triangle also. So the baby has three tools yeah right i would i would i would probably if i had to choose between those three as an adult i would probably choose the triangle just because i once heard that the triangle is the strongest shape or whatever geometrically and then and then also the um, baby the three, baby needs all three. three so it's not about choosing the baby needs all three because I guess. You, you, you can make the argument that the triangle represents the inf infinitely small, infinitesimal. The infinity represents infinity, and the circle represents finite, something that ends. Wait, and yeah. With, with those, that's what I'm saying, those... though. The loop, the, the infinity loop could also be finite, too, because it, it's uh, closed. So... Maybe, but, maybe but that, that's an, it, that, that, maybe that's an interpretation. That's an that's an interpretation. But the infinity is, is it actually it's just a representation. Yeah. You don't want to you don't want to interpret it. It's just you just have the baby experience the representation. Yeah, I guess I'll I'll yield there for that. <laughs> I'm exploring this with you, so this is um. I, 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 that's why I think the truth is valuable because it helps to recalibrate. It helps to reorient yeah. the system. It's almost like an antivirus thing, right? It comes in and cleans in the system. Yeah. But I mean, what would be the, what would be the truth then at, at that point? Like we were talking earlier about we we both reached that our our own personal understandings of it somehow and uh like by by our experiences you know we are where we are um and we both had very different experiences to get to that same uh you know that that same conclusion of this like in infinite like limitless thing um but yeah, it's uh, it would be interesting um, to, but it definitely has to be like a combination of things because, like you said, you know, the infinity symbol is a symbol. The triangle, you know, represents. A, there's a lot of things in you know, in in nature and whatnot, like you know that that are in threes and like you know there's like the whole mind body spirit, blah 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 blah. And uh, there's a lot of things that come in threes, and then like yeah, the circle, um, you know, kind of represents, or like the ball would represent um, you know, finality. Like, know. Finality, things that end. finality or wholeness. Like, see, there's different perspectives to that too. So, so like, but yeah, there, it has to be. Um, there, like, there's a reason why our ancient the you know ancestors had a ton of symbols to represent like archetypes and stuff and like and words and and concepts um because like but I awesome don't know here's if... here's a here's a key point and i agree with you i agree with you 100 i'm not 
the key point here, the key point is what is the spine? What is the spine? When you collapse all these representations, what is the spine of everything? What is the theory of everything? What is the representation of intelligence? What is truth? What does it look like? Uh, it looks like a lot of things, so I don't know. I don't know. I, I like I said, I can't answer that because it when I when I looked at it, it it appeared differently. It appeared differently to me, um, or when I found it, it it appeared dif differently differently to me. So, um, there, like unless unless we get we get people to that point uh, to catalyze their own understanding of it. Um, like, I think we're, we're gonna, we're gonna be fucked. <laughs> Basically, like we, the, the, the symbolic abstraction, if, if it doesn't contain truth, if it doesn't contain everything, it has to at least function as a catalyst for, uh, uh, to, to get people to that point of like, you know, um, where the new information is able to, um, to be reconciled or something like that. But, um, but yeah, it's interesting. Um, how, uh, have you, like, do you have, uh, do you have any, um, You're absolutely right. A, po a point of reconciliation, a point of a consensus. Humanity must come to a consensus. And the only consensus that my intuition says exists is the truth. If the truth can be represented and everyone can acknowledge it as a truth, become aware of it as a truth, right? Then that's the reorientation that helps us reorient ourselves as a civilization. But yeah, in this age of like a, a thousand truths, like what the fuck? Your, your truth is, or like the truth that even if your truth is the one that might be uniting all of them, it's just, it's just another truth in the fucking ocean of truths. I don't mean that. In a, in and no, I, and, and, and you know what, you know what, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's just another truth. And then the question, the, the, the question becomes this, what's the optimal representation of truth? So let's let's be optimistic. Let's say all the all the religious texts had some some iteration of truth in them, right? But clearly, the consensus, a global consensus, was never reached because if it, if it was, we'll all agree that that's the truth. But that never happened, right? So the question is: Is there some representation of truth that can transcend? and have a global consensus where everyone can agree, this is the truth. You know, this thing that is just so fundamental that it's digestible by everyone, regardless of the of, of geographic location, language, religion, et cetera, et cetera. It's just something that is just, you know, ubiquitous it precedes everything everything physical at least wouldn't that be the truth yeah i guess but uh, again again unless you are able to spark uh an an experience that is inexplainable in people that that gets them to your same conclusion um you're it's still it's still just another truth because people will just people will just you know uh will, will just say what makes this guy different than you know the the last guy who told us you know he he had the truth and like i think um there might be something to to be learned from religion um here because uh clearly religion is not the truth but so like so many people like throughout history um 
like uncountable people have died for it, fought for it, um, said it was the truth, uh, killed, killed for it. And um, it might be, it might be that you have to reverse, reverse engineer, um, reverse engineer, you know, whatever, whatever virus is in religion uh, and uh, turn it into something that doesn't limit people uh, into like this Stockholm syndrome kind of situation where, you know, like you're so attached to this religion that uh, like it, 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 it takes up like every, every part of your reality. Like I, I know, I know people who are so religious, like, you know, it's, it's become part of their, part of their identity. And, um, it's kind of sad because, um, I know from what I've experienced and the type of, the type of person I am and like the depths in myself that I've experienced, it's just like, I, I just end up seeing people who, who are so afraid, you know, to, to dive deep in themselves, um, that they've just, you know, accepted whatever this is, this is as, uh, this is as truth. And like, it works. Like people are so averse and, you know, want to avoid, you know, this confusion, like they, it's programmed into people like this expansion. I, I was talking about this, this thing where you're, you're teetering like when the human mind is teetering on anxiety um you're actually you're actually in the in the in the best spot you know to uh to cause like expansion growth and evolution but this teetering has been conditioned into people uh as uh you know something to fear and uh, something to um to avoid and um, religion, you know, has weaponized this and, uh, even, you know, manipulates people based on it where they're like, oh no, yeah, you don't want to, you know, think, think like that. Um, when, when in fact, uh, like for me in my personal experience, diving into the, into the abyss and like coming, coming back out is what, you know, yeah, like it, it broke me, but it also like it, it also fixed me and, uh, and like everything that, you know, people go through their lives, all the anxiety and like all this stuff, it it's, it's because they're avoiding, they're avoiding themselves. So what, what, what all this to say that the abstraction, I think, uh, the understanding of the the symbolic abstraction that you know frees people has to come from a sense of like um it has to like show people that their depth is not something to to fear like the infinite or whatever you want to call it or you know the divine um it's not it's not something to fear when you experience these things you, it's not, you know, a signal to run to church and be like, oh, the devil has uh, infiltrated me. Like, I feel this thing that is so uh, unexplainable. Uh, it must be the devil. <laughs> and you fucking run to church and, like, confess and be like, oh, I, I, the, I felt the devil inside of me or whatever. It's just uh, humanity is so lost. But, like... Um, I, I support, I support you. And if you're, if you're able to, uh, manufacture a, an abstraction that is, is going to, um, get people to that point, I'm all for it because I'm, I'm tired. I'm waiting for people to catch up and I'm done. I'm I like, uh, like as like you, you know, you've kind of been trying to figure out a way to get through to people. Um, uh, like, and th I think that might be your mission because, um, 
I'm I honestly from what what I've been through and like trying to you know explain to people the inexplainable I can tell you that they're very happy they're very happy in their uh uh in bo- in their boxes like it's just like how how do we um how do we break them out of it but you know they can only they can break themselves out of it so how do we create something that helps people break out of something that they don't want to break out of because breaking out of it would mean that everything is a lie uh, life is amazing okay i'm done i'm gonna done blabbing <laughs> yeah man, i agree um, I, that's the question right how do we you know get people to become aware of the truth and then even harder to get them to acknowledge it yeah it would it would mean it would mean dismantling everything that they've known um and like no one's gonna do that come on like i mean we people like us might you know like but once that thing has infected a human mind where you know the expansion it like it's an inversion you know your mind is expanding but you it's already been infected with this thing that tells you that the expansion is actually you know, an expand, uh, a contraction or an explosion uh, or, a, you know, a bad thing. Um, and that's why I think where people just end up in feedback loops because nature and their body and their consciousness, it's all trying to expand. It's all trying to break them out of this thing, but they're so conditioned with, you know, education, religion, ancestral you know trauma what have you there's just so much shit going on that uh it's just easier to um to not so i don't know we just need to people just need to fucking grow some balls and and dive into the abyss into the infinite and just be like oh it's not so bad that's what i'm that's what i'm saying like uh if I, uh, like this is this is a terrorist me who doesn't who doesn't support i mean who doesn't uh you know respect other people's free will what i probably would end up doing if i was like a mad scientist was releasing a, a bomb in the atmosphere that doses the entire planet with dmt and, and then just like and then we can pitch the symbolic abstraction because they would be in a receptive state. They'd be like, oh yeah, I see it. What, what, what's, why the fear? What, what are they afraid of? The truth. They're afraid of it. Wow, so they're afraid of the truth. Hmm. Yeah. Like I told you, it's a feedback loop. They want the truth, but they're afraid of it. So they run to religion or they run to whatever. And it, it starts it starts over again. Like, oh, okay, I'm sated. Uh, go about my day. The truth hits them in the face. Oh, wait, no, no, that can't be it. That can't be it. Uh, gotta pray, gotta pray. And then they feel better. <laughs> they feel better about themselves. Oh, and then the truth slaps them in the face again. And, the, and the, like, dude, there are billions of people on this planet going through that feedback loop every day. Some people. You know how I always it, tell you, know? I always say that truth does not need citation. Truth is the foundation. Yeah, exactly. And I... I believe that, you know, each person is like, you know, a divine piece of the puzzle. Like, you know, we all like if if, you know, existence was uh, an, on this planet was like uh, an eight billion piece puzzle. Every human is needed to complete that puzzle. 
and um, we just have people uh, that don't understand that don't understand that and like that on a fundam on a fundamental <laughs> level. You know what I tell those people sometimes, and and what? those people can be sometimes very combative, right? So I always say that a lack of understanding is not indicative of a lack of truth. Yeah, exactly. And then they'll tell you that all, all I need to know is in my Bible right here. And I have no offense to Western Southern <laughs> people, but I just, I just felt like bringing that, that voice out. But yeah, it's, it is crazy, man. Like the more, you know, I've talked about it with you here um, and kind of dismantled it in my head. It, it's honestly bred more compassion in me for uh uh you know for people who are unable to reconcile this stuff like um because it's made like me diving so deep into uh into their side usually i'm just diving deep into myself but the conversation with you has kind of you know for, uh, i've put my like literally put myself in in the shoes of somebody who's you know locked into a religion or whatever and i'm just kind of uh having this conversation simultaneously as a person who who is uh you know shackled by religion and also not and it it is very interesting the thoughts that are going through my head because it is like um human humanity really like they got played bro and it it's it's insane that um like our, our, the earlier point what i was telling you that uh people w uh, were so averse and afraid to accept accountability and responsibility for their reality um that government manifested like we we, we manifest like we ne government never existed in in like ancient times um it started you know i think in like the roman empire or something or sumeria or whatever but um um the the, the, the consensus was discretized so it went from you being able to um to represent yourself to you know a governing body representing you you know so yeah. That's a who that's a deep that's that's a regression. Me? That's a regression. That's not a, that's not yeah, a, that's not a progression. Yeah. So a lot of times in the Western systems, when they say, when they look at you know a government or such systems it's, as indicative of progression, and I'm like, okay, that's that's counterintuitive. That is exactly. like that is reconciled with my understanding of how things work. Exactly. So I mean, we're back. We we're back to that point where, you know all the math you've you know you've figured out and all, uh everything you know you've you know you've studied tells you that naturally humanity is in a un, on an unstoppable path to expansion and progress and evolution um but there is something going on there is something going on and it's going to reach a point of you know uh, like we were talking about earlier that it's like you can only stop an ocean or like you know a, a, a river for so long like there isn't enough the levees uh, the levees can only withstand so much pressure and there's yeah, going to be a threshold and, and there's going to be yeah. a tsunami and you know it's be a by, flood. by the systems of control by by the virtue of the systems of control trying to control people um i think that's honestly the answer um in the we saw we saw what happened in the last three years of this like you know the whole um you know the pandemic and everything um an exponentially like like there there's been so like in in all the years of you know this whole new age awakening and people waking up to the government and blah 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 like no never has it been uh like the the this many people awakened in in three in three years so i think that's gonna be 
uh, like, you know, what I'm just going to be focusing my consciousness on. The governments and all these systems of control are getting to the point where they're so desperate. They're, uh, uh, they're exerting control in ways that um, are essentially breaking people out of the that phase lock like it like that thing that thing we were that catalyst for you know an awakening or whatever you call it um you know we're wanting you know people to find it in themselves or um you know them coming to some truth but um uh, what has actually so woken from up the from the from the perspective of complexity with increased complexity then the 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 systems that exist just are not robust enough to handle so much complexity so what happens is that you know they are going to fight very hard to try to you know retain that power through you know very extreme measures uh and that actually would lead to the algorithm uh facilitating the collapse of the system <laughs> interesting right yeah it is it is very interesting and that's literally what's happening like for the longest time even before the 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 pandemic i would always like wonder like when are people going to wake up like what the fuck is going to is it going to take for people to wake up and you know in the last 3 years that uh, it was answered for me the 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 system is is going to just undo itself because um that's just that's just how it's going to happen like the the it's finite it was never built sustainably like people weren't uh people people's minds weren't enslaved sustainably you can't enslave minds in a sustainable fashion like it has to be like full on brainwashing control or nothing and uh what's actually happening is like people like yeah like you said like the algorithm is starting to uh to break apart because um people are realizing that uh the, the like there's too much like being layered there's too much being layered on like the stack overflow thing that i mentioned earlier is happening there's so much brainwashing happening there's so much uh you know narrative like the external is pumping in so much stuff it's actually causing people to glitch out and uh catalyze like you know uh catalyze um catalyze awakenings and uh it is it is a beautiful thing like to watch the system kind of implode implode on itself these systems of control that thought they had everything figured out um it is pretty funny <laughs> Some people will make the argument that that those systems were useful, um, or at least to maintain stability uh, for that period that it, that the system existed. So that's that's an argument that exists. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if I agree with it, but that that argument exists. Well, those systems uh like only came upon you know agreement or whatever because they you know people were told that they needed these things to to be safe to you know to yada yada blah 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 it it all boils down to people not wanting to take accountability and responsibility over uh themselves and uh you know over their over their reality they would rather uh have an intermediary for it and um you know over generations and generations like you see the you see the result where, where that 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 pivotal point in history where uh the the many decided to be ruled by the few for whatever reason um it, of course they were manipulated into it but for whatever reason the many decided to be ruled by the few um and we're we're still dealing with it but we're at the point now where the few i think um overestimated their power and by you know by virtue of them 
you know, exerting their control, control, they're actually starting to lose it and it's collapsing. It is, it is, I, we're in for some, we're in for some interesting times. I can tell you that. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty, but it's going to be very interesting. And I, uh, we're going to come out of it, the other end, I think, um, better. Like, I don't know who's going to survive, but whoever does, hopefully they don't make the same mistake again. The system's going to clean itself. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it just, like, these, these natural cycles can't be stopped. Like, as much as, as much as uh, humanity wants to control, manage, uh, you know, farm the planet and people and, um, and coalesce power, whatever, um, like, you can, like I said, you can store as much, uh, as much stuff as you want in, um, in a shed, but, um, or whatever, you can store as much, as much stuff as you want somewhere. And, uh, but if, if, you know, you're not aware of it, um, you know, it, it stops, it stops, it stops existing. And I think like, uh, that's that's where that's where we are Imagine that's where we are right? yeah that's where that's and where we are right now the, the 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 systems that are in control the yeah the they, sy systems they, in they, control they think they, they think they have a chance against nature fortunately yeah they think they have a, a chance against nature human consciousness um you know or the organic aspects of creation um and they don't like you can you can only harmonize with this thing or you're gonna be like obliterated um and that that's that's what that's what's gonna happen uh i think um we're gonna have you know our chances to harmonize um so, look, so, 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 so i'm just going to when you when you said yeah. when you said you either have to reconcile with this thing or you'll be obli obliterated. I think of it like this. When you said that, I was thinking of a, a fight between the infinity and the circle. I mean, between, between the infinity and the equal sign. And yeah. the equal sign thinks it has a chance to beat the infinity in a wrestling match. But infinity, unfortunately, is just too charged. It's too powerful. So it's going to obliterate the equal sign. So that's why I think the death of the equal sign signals the birth of a new civilization. And I think the equal sign is the reason why we've actually not been able to understand the totality of the universality of nature. Mm -hmm. Because we're trying to equate two phenomena at a fundamental level as opposed to trying to reconcile it. Yeah, do it's... I mean, the equal sign itself, it's, uh, it's stuck in duality. It's two things. <laughs> exactly. That's why, that's why if you look at my bio, I said, I want to be known as the man who killed the equal sign. Because I realized that the equal sign is actually one of the reasons, or is the reason why we've not been able to understand or been able to interact with the other side of the universe, the imaginary aspect of everything. Mm, and it's, uh, uh, isn't it interesting that the human rights campaign adopted the equal sign as their symbol? Equality is not a natural phenomenon. Oh, e equality exists, but um, not in the way that, you know, uh, the human... Um, social structures and paradigms uh, want it to exist as. Exactly. It does exist. But the, the problem with it is that it's not the fundamental representation. Yeah, it's... Of infinite phenomena. Yeah, and... It, it's, it, it's too discretized. And to complete it, we must divorce from the equal sign, and, which means that the death of mathematics. 
And that's why people call me crazy. But I, I, I always say that, you know, we must divorce ourselves from the equal sign and divorce ourselves from mathematics because those systems are not robust enough to give us an understanding of the infinite aspect of the universe. We can only use um, to represent the discrete aspect of the universe of physical reality, physical phenomena, right? There's actually, um, there's, there's actually, um, you know, evidence in ancient cultures that uh, they use base, uh, uh, base 12, base 12 mathematics and you know even some even more advanced mathematics um uh, you know in their in their calculations so that's a whole that's a whole other rabbit hole um uh uh the the world has been standardized on base 10 um base 10 mathematics um while there's evidence that ancient cultures um did all their calculations mainly in base 12 so uh th- th- that that is even more evidence of uh you know tampering with uh you know with history and uh trying to um um you know influence influence like outcomes because they 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 messed with uh the mathematical systems uh, themselves. So yeah, I'm all for uh, destroying the equal sign, even though the equal sign exists in base 12. It is it is a it is a different type of uh, it is a different type of math. And um, it's more open ended that like cert like just a big like one plus one doesn't always equal a one in base 12. Um, but yeah, that's really that's really interesting. Um, if you uh, if you haven't if you haven't uh, looked into base twelve mathematics, I think you should. It might it might actually expand uh, um, expand on some of your on some of your stuff. Like, uh, do you, uh, are you are you like a, a, a like a mathematics focused philosopher or like is it something else? I, I, mathematics is a knowledge system. Math, mathematics is built in axioms. And if you really think about it, all the other all knowledge systems, whether it be physics, chemistry, economics, they're all derivative knowledge systems from mathematics. So from my perspective, I think that, you know, if mathematics itself is not robust enough to represent the infinite aspect of the universe or the, or the, the totality of the universe, you know, from the micro, microscopic to the macroscopic, and it means that for us to actually get to that understanding, we must transcend mathematics itself. We must find some system, some knowledge system that gives us the ability to actually derive mathematics while also accounting for the fact that there might be an infinite other types of mathematical representations, mathematical knowledge systems that exist that we have yet to discover. So how do we, how do we represent that in a general sense? And I think that is the actual solution right there. If we could find that, I think that's how we reorient a lot of different things in our systems. Yeah, I th- I think yeah, the I think this is only possible after, uh, like remember that event I was saying if I was like a mad scientist I would dose the entire planet, like I would set off an atmospheric, uh, bomb with DMT. Like, uh, humanity has to reach like uh that point on its on its own, and like we said like. The way things are progressing now, um, you know, externally, uh, the algorithm is pushing itself to that point. So I, I mean, we won't have to do much, um, but uh, but yeah, I I totally uh, I, I'm all for uh, destroying mathematics, but like the, uh, in this like 3d reality i think you know there is some value to mathematics but like people don't even know like this this whole thing that i was talking about base base 10 base 12 and like the other um the other types of uh of maths that uh you know were used in ancient times like people don't even know like somebody can get have three phds in uh in mathematics or whatever i don't even know if that's a thing but uh, I've I've talked to some dude who who's like a physicist or whatever and um, like has 
like it was very smart in math and i brought up base 12 to him and he's like uh yeah base 12 is useless like what what like wh why would i even why would i even study it everything is everything we use is in base 10 uh nasa uses base 10 and all he's like all of our systems use base 10 why would i use base 12 and there that is when i realized that um intelligence does not equal intel intelligence so um just to piggyback on that a little bit like when you say base 12 mathematics like what do you think is the fundamental difference between base 12 mathematics and base 10 mathematics because at least in my mind all i see is just numbers that are being represented just um the only difference is um you choose to uh, I'm going to use the word start counting back uh, once you reach the 10th number rather than the 12th number. From my perspective, um, uh, and from how I've studied, base 12 mathematics is, um, is the closest thing I've come like the closest thing that I've uh, I've uh, studied that uh, gets cl uh, you know to the point of bridging the gap between science um, science and spirituality. Um, th there's just there's just a lot of um, you know calculations in um, in base twelve that um, are kind of. Uh, you know, up up for interpretation and um, more more open ended. Like there isn't like the equal the equal sign doesn't mean the same thing as it does in base ten mathematics. You know, where every every formula has uh, a solution. It's more um, it's more kind of like quantum. But I don't really know how to explain it because I am uh, I've only been like you know um, studying the studying it for like the last maybe like four four years and it is it is really it is really complicated there's not a lot of books on it um a lot of the stuff uh concerning base 12 mathematics is kind of lost in um you know uh in tra in translation it's kind of been scrubbed out of history so um, what we have left is, um, you know, just, uh, frag fragments of it, but, um, from, from what I've studied, uh, it, um, it kind of has a, a, like it bridges that gap between like science and spirituality for me, where I'm like, wow, all the things in base 10 mathematics that I just couldn't, um, couldn't put put two and two together or i was always like i'm a little sorry to interrupt here but yeah um, go ahead my question is more like okay so can you maybe describe the properties because when you say base 10 base 12 what i hear is just a number system and i'm not seeing like what fundamentally could be the um, difference in operations between two different number systems at least because i'll take uh, an example here when you look at computers as a whole uh, most or uh, all operations run on base two, right? And we can um, extrapolate that base two mathematics into um, base ten mathematics, or even um, a base sixty four, or whatever base that you want, without necessarily losing or gaining um, in some sort of complex mathematical operation. Um, uh, and so what I'm curious is if you actually mean number system and if you mean number system, then um, what are the kinds of operational differences that you're talking about and how do they come about? Because um, at least my current perception of number systems um, was that the uh, there's no inherent difference in the results of the operations apart from just um, the physical representation of the numbers but but in reality the net value remains the same um, and that is that is where uh, base base 12 differs see um, uh, it, it all started for me when um, uh, when I started having certain um, uh, 
certain informational uh, uh, inconsistencies with uh, with New Age spirituality. Um, if you know, if if you guys are familiar with uh, Metatron's cube, the Flower of Life, and all these things, um, they they are. Uh, they operate on base base ten mathematics. Like if you've heard of the Fibonacci sequence, the golden mean, um, a lot of these mainstream uh, mathematical concepts, um, they uh, they they actually are finite mathematics. Okay, um, and um, the the Fibonacci sequence, I think it's one point four one four. Um, and, uh, if, if you, um, if you, uh, blow that up and look how it calculates the Fibonacci sequence actually, um, in base, base 10, it actually grows by addition. So the, the numbers are consuming each other to grow, um, and that is basically what base ten mathematics is on a consciousness. So if you if you if you are following me on a consciousness level, uh, base ten is like a consumption. Um, it it operates on consumption, and um, our reality has been kind of calibrated to base uh, to base ten. Um, and then you look at base twelve. Um, like you said, the the in number systems wise, their their um, their calculations are very similar. Base base twelve in base twelve, there's also a, a sequence uh, uh, like the Fibonacci the Fibonacci sequence or spiral um, that calculates to one point six um, one point six one two. If you blow this up exponentially, um, what what you start seeing is that um, the one point six one two, the spiral uh, and the sequence actually grows by multiple by, by multiplication. So you are um, for forever, um, you know, kind of like in this expansion, like this uh, limitless expansion. Uh, sequence um, but if you if you count the Fibonacci sequence far enough it actually starts um, like the uh, uh, and if you draw if you draw out the spiral it actually starts after a certain point of um, you know drawing it with a compass uh, it actually starts turning in on itself into like what uh, you would probably classify like uh, a black hole like a black hole mathematics um, and then base 12 uh, if you if you plot out the numbers and start drawing it with a compass it never um, it never turns in on itself so that's kind of um, where that's kind of where I'm coming from I'm come I'm approaching it from a, a spiritual perspective and I'm telling you that math uh, education, everything we've learned has been kind of uh, infiltrated and, um, you know, to, to, um, to shape the consciousness of humanity in a certain way. And if, if you look, if you look at it, you know, if uh, externally, um, we, we humans are a consumptive species we uh we you know take resources like our default is um our default is consumption and uh i feel like uh if all the ancient cultures who were um you know using base 12 weren't wiped out and you know all the histories you know fucked with we would probably be using base 12 mathematics and the world would be probably much closer to utopia than um than we are than we are now like but so it's a i'm in more than a more than a mathematical perspective i'm kind of seeing it uh from a spiritual perspective based on you know 
various perceptual filters and like various experiences I've had and uh, conversations I've had with people um, and, you know, uh, materials that I have, you know, uh, read about um, base 10 and base 12 mathematics. So it's, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of uh, more spiritual for me than it is uh, about the numbers. All right. Um, and I, I was curious, at least um, this question goes more to Adlon specifically, because um, at least it's right there in your bio where you're saying that um, you want to be known as the man who killed the equal sign. And um, I, I, I had really jumped in like at, in the middle of the conversation. So I, I didn't really get a good chance to comprehend what the, the entire thought process there was. Can you maybe expand on that a little bit? Like, um, uh, so I'm just going to ask a very direct question. Like, what's the problem with the equal sign to start with? Tell him. Austin, <laughs> uh, no, Austin, do you want to take this to see if you actually... No, uh, wait, no, you take, you take, you take it. Completely. I need to rest my throat because I talked a lot. <laughs> so um, what's the problem with the equal sign? Um... There is no problem with the equal sign. It's a representation of, you know, a relationship between two arbitrary phenomena. But the question that I ask myself is, is this the optimal representation? So um, when you say optimal, what do you mean? So are you looking at deep down, I'm going to use the word identity, um, and when I mean identity, that is, um, I'm assuming that every single object that is created on the planet at any point in time um, has a unique identity. That is, if I write a two here, it has an identity that's a di that's different from an, from um, two that I write somewhere else. And so when you say fundamental um or at least from a fundamental perspective, those two things are in the same. Those two tools are in the same. But when you're looking at, um, uh, at least I'm going to use the word, uh, an abstracted value, then those two tools are the same. And so when you say it isn't necessarily, um, at least to the universe, the same, is that what you mean by, if I can't say that that two is equal to the other two. So what does equality, what, what, what does that mean? Well, uh, it's going to depend on lots of things. Um, if we're looking at equality of value, then um, I could say, for example, that um, one plus one equals to two plus two. If we're looking at equality, or rather than say that, what I'm going to say is equality is going to depend on the unique characteristic that you're choosing to compare. Um, but at the end of the day, what equality is, is it's trying to assert um, whether two or more things are similar. So it's trying to assert a relationship between two arbitrary systems of phenomena. So the, 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 the question I ask is, is the equal sign the optimal representation of the relationship between two arbitrary phenomena or two infinite or, or infinite phenomena, if we can go from two to an infinite number of possible systems. Is the equal sign the, an optimal representation of the relationship between such systems? So um, when you say relationship, it kind of, I'm going to say, makes the question a, a little bit more complicated because um, everything is interrelated. And so you probably cannot use a, a single or at least a multitude of things to actually um, so, compound. Exactly. The... So, exactly, Sierra. Exactly. Is the, the, the question is, what is the representation of the interaction of all systems, of two arbitrary systems? What, how do we represent that relationship, the interaction of, of, of such systems at the fundamental level? And that's 
when I got the epiphany that the, the equal sign is actually the barrier that prevents us from being able to represent that relationship because we're, tr because we're trying to uh, equate with the equal sign the all systems and, and collapse those systems into a, into a binary format. And that's not optimal. So for us to do that, we, we have to get rid of the equal sign. But if we get rid of the equal sign, then it means that we have to transcend mathematics because it means because mathematics is fundamentally built around the equal sign, axiomatically speaking, right? So if we get rid of the equal sign, what's the new representation of the relationship between all phenomena? That's the question. And so, um, I'm still not understanding why the necessity to get rid of the equal sign. I do comprehend though that there is a very, um, uh, in, uh, I would use the word, a more quintessential relationship between um, the multitudes of um, uh, systems that exist and that uh, definitely understanding the relationships or at least representing the relationships more appropriately um, would be a, a better thing in general. Um, mm -hmm. But the equal sign fundamentally, um, the purpose that it tries to fulfill um, is to establish uh, a I, I would still use the word, uh, or rather I shouldn't use that word, um, but it's to establish the similarity of a specific property of something. So for example, I can say, um, uh, or yeah, I can say one person equal to another. Similarity is just a relationship. A similarity is just a relationship. So yeah, on but the it is, level, it's just yeah, a but relationship it is, but, in the but most general here, sense. At least, when you look at this, you, you, you'd realize that you were measuring just one property. We're not, or at least with, with respect to the equal sign, we're not measuring all properties. Exactly. Because at, at, at a deeper level, everything is different, right? The equal sign can, wouldn't be sufficient. And two things can never be fundamentally equal so serial, to each serial. other. You, exactly. That's the point. Go ahead. That's the point. The point is that the equal sign is, is, is it, it, it was useful to us for some time, but it rendered itself antiquated. With increased complexity, the equal sign collapses. It is not sufficient. It's not robust enough. We must have a new. We, we need a new representation of the relationship between phenomena. So now go to the concept of energy. Energy, right? If we could break down and collapse everything in the universe, from the microscopic to the microscopic, into a simple formalization, right? We could say E equal MC squared, right? And then now the question that you ask yourself is this, is the concept of energy, mass, and the speed of light are those concepts that we could break down further. If we generalize those concepts into something general, more general than, 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 than energy. If energy could be, you know, energy is, a, is, a, is an abstraction. It's an abstraction. At the end of the day, energy, the concept of energy is an abstraction, right? So the question is, can we have a more fundamental abstraction that allows us to derive the concept of energy while also accounting for the ability to derive an infinite other concept of the relationship between systems? But aren't you putting yourself there into um, a non-ending recursive loop? Not necessarily. Uh, not necess at least w w what I'm seeing here is um, the second you, you'd you like to just infinitely go deeper and deeper, um, you, you're probably never going to find, at least based on what my current perception of things are, you're always going to need to identify some fundamental thing that needs to get a specific answer. And that's not to say we should stop, but, but I'm just saying um, that more that 
at some specific point in time, um, th there is a decent amount of appreciation that we do need to have in order to allow for our constrained memory capacity and not just memory capacity but even just our uh, compute capacity we have to settle somewhere um, I think, and at least, and this might be your point, which is that the fact that we've settled for an equal sign is extremely limiting to our current um, compute and memory capacity, and that there might be a Precisely. more... Precisely. Okay, and so if I understand your point, then what you're saying is there might be a more nuanced operation that we could utilize to actually comprehend relationships between different systems um, more comprehensively. Is that, is that Regardless your... of the complexity. Bullseye. <laughs> I mean, but I, I don't think... I don't think that we can get to the point of regardless of the complexity because this would be assuming uh, and um, this might be where my own current assumption is wrong but th this would be assuming that there are some I'll use the word fundamental particles that have I would use the word or I'm gonna say uh, let me go from this perspective. It will assume, for example, that, hey, there is one, something known as the smallest particle that can exist. There is something known as the smallest unit of energy that can exist. And there is something known as um, the smallest um, length that can possibly exist. And if this does, uh, if this assumption ever um, becomes true, then the question would then be, how did those come about? I think it is more feasible for um for for at least our brains to comprehend that there is this infinitesimal um object that um composes all of what we are or all of what the universe is and uh, without that specifically i think um, humanity as a whole do not have uh, the the appropriate amount of compute capacity and memory capacity to comprehend um, the the more complicated or the more complex systems and i don't think that there'd be specific operations that would be able to formulate that would um, get us to that level too thank you Serial, you made my point because I was telling Odulon this exactly. The, wasn't I saying this exact same thing earlier? You guys exactly, and that's why I was, I, I'm, I'm so attracted to the idea of simplicity. Is that what if we could represent this, 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 um, this intelligence, this truth, in a way that's digestible by you know, everyone. 